Let's get more now on our top story. There are more than 100 vaccines in development and being tested across the globe in a bid to halt the COVID-19 pandemic. None have been approved yet, but a number of companies have reported positive results. Here in the UK, as we've been hearing, the University of Oxford has been working with the drugs firm AstraZeneca on a vaccine that's delivered to humans via a chimpanzee virus. The technique is called a vaccine vector. It contains the genetic code of the protein spikes, which give the coronavirus its name. And it's known to garner a strong strong immune response from humans. A Chinese company called Sinovac is developing, it, developing a vaccine based on inactivated COVID-19 particles. The vaccine looks to be safe in its early stages of testing. It's now moved to the crucial stage three phase with that trial being taken, taking place in Brazil. A vaccine developed by another Chinese company, CanSino Biologics, and the Beijing Institute of Technology has shown promising results in the phase two testing. In fact, so confident are the Chinese of its efficacy that uh, they've approved it for military use. And then there's the American firm Moderna, which is developing a vaccine by using a messenger RNA, tiny molecules that trick the human body into producing viral proteins itself. It's being tested right now on humans, but here's the rub. No mRNA vaccine has ever been used on a large population. Let's get more on this now from Dr. Margaret Harris, who's the World Health Organization spokesperson. She joins us now live from Geneva. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Harris. Good to see you again. So first, I've got to get your reaction on this very promising result from the Oxford University vaccine trial. Certainly a pleasure joining you. And this is one of the really, really good things in what seems to be a dire and terrible situation. The fact that there are so many groups around the world working so hard to achieve what really, in scientific terms, you could almost call the impossible, but they're making the impossible possible. We've got more than 21 candidate vaccines in human trials, which um, if you told me that last year that this was gonna happen, I just would have said, you're talking um, fantasy. <laughs> yes, it's just unprecedented, isn't it? And I've, I know I've asked you this before, but are we now able to make some slightly more accurate projections about when a vaccine could be widely available? Well, we know we've got lots of options here, but we can't put it down to days and weeks, I'm afraid. And, uh, and if you're hearing days and weeks anywhere, I think you'd have to take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but what we do know is that when you get to the stage where you're testing widely in humans that you're getting to an important important phase but then you've got to get to the scale up the manufacturing the working out how to get that into the arms of people and that takes months or even longer I just described some of the contenders in play at the moment so we've got the AstraZeneca Oxford trial the Pfizer one in Germany Moderna in America which do you think of these contenders as further as furthest ahead we know that quite a few of them are doing very well. We're not going to put our sort of like our numbers on one or the other, but we certainly know that um, the work that's being done and you, you described, say, the Chimpad vector vaccine. We know that that's a vaccine that was used for the uh, one of the Ebola vaccines, and we know that there's quite a lot of experience with that and 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 the others. But we are very encouraged by all of them. Well, that's great. <laughs> Not picking a favourite, fair enough. Um, so are you happy with the way that different countries and firms are working together or could that be better? Well, we've seen a certainly great coming together in, in what's called the ACT Accelerator, which is uh, brought together by the European Union, by um, Gates and by uh, Gavi. And the, uh, it's really a very, very important thing because it's looking not at only at how to really accelerate this research and keep on sharing what we're learning and keep on moving it forward, but also how we can distribute this fairly, who we prioritize for and make sure that the most at risk groups, the groups that you need to protect first, really will be protected first. Last week we had this rather disturbing news about these alleged um, hackings into research of COVID-19 um, uh, research I I in the UK. Um, is that something that WHO is very concerned about, this alleged Russian hacking into research? Well, I, c I couldn't really comment. I don't have any expertise on that. So, again, we encourage as much openness as possible. You don't have to be hiding or, or concerned about uh, finding out stuff because the, uh, what's going on is that people are, are very openly sharing their findings. We had the, the leading um, vaccine producers all here in the first weeks of, of 
first week of July, giving out their findings, discussing it all very openly between them. So in the world that we're in now, the world of these great scientists, there is no need for fear and hiding and secrecy. Now, finally, Dr. Harris, when we do get this all-important vaccine, uh, there is a, a, a movement, a growing movement, perhaps, of anti-vaxxers who might, in fact, uh, you know, refuse to take these vaccines. And, you know, I was reading, apparently, quite a lot of younger people are saying that they wouldn't want to take an anti-COVID vaccine. Is that something that WHO is worried about? Certainly, right from the start, you know, when people were saying, oh, it'll all be over when we have the vaccine, we were warning. Just remember that there are people who, who are against vaccines and are negative about vaccines because we have a very good measles vaccine and yet we have vast numbers of cases of measles every year. So the people who are just thinking it's going to all be over when we have a vaccine need to understand right now we have to talk to each other and explain to each other how, again, if we do have a vaccine that works, that will protect us and will stop the virus from transmitting, we all have to be willing to use that vaccine appropriately. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Dr. Margaret Harris from the WHO.